Greetings friends, today we'll dive into some of the most intriguing and powerful items you can find in the first act of Baldur's Gate 3. From fiery to handed swords to enchanted amulets, I'll guide you through the treasures and secrets hidden within the game. Whether you are a seasoned adventurer or just starting your journey, these items will undoubtedly enhance your gameplay experience. Let's get started! Amulet of Restoration A very cool amulet that allows you to restore your group's health. It's even better when used in combination with a charming ring that synergizes with it, granting 1d4 to attacks for 2 turns with any healing. When paired, the Amulet of Restoration becomes extremely useful in the early game. You can find or purchase the amulet from a merchant in the dungeon, and the ring is sold by goblins in the old dungeon camp. Everburn Blade. This is a fiery two-handed sword with a hot blade. Many of you probably encountered this weapon, as it appears early in the first act on the Illithid ship. A demon named Jalk owns this sword, and to obtain it you either have to kill him or use Shadow House ability. In fact, it's a regular two-handed sword with a fiery enchantment of 1d4 damage. It looks quite good and can serve you well until the end of the first act. Bracers of Defense. These are excellent gloves that give a plus 2 bonus to your character's armor class. They are hidden behind a secret mirror and are suitable for monks, mages and even barbarians. These classes get a bonus to dodging incoming attacks when not wearing any armor. Defender Flare. This is a fun weapon that gives plus 1 to your character's armor class. It pairs well with the protection ring, which I'll discuss later. Overall, its properties aren't particularly interesting beyond its basic plus 1 enchantment. Its usefulness diminishes when you obtain legendary weapon in this location, which I won't spoil, so explore it for yourself if you take this maze. Do it for fun. Ring of Protection Early in the game, Maul will ask you to steal the Sylvanas totem from the druids, if you save her little followers. So, if you want to get this item, don't kill them. Otherwise, Maul won't give you the quest. After stealing the Sylvanas totem from the druids, Maul rewards the player with a very cool protection ring, providing plus 1 to armor class and plus 1 to saving throws. This rare ring complements the defender flare perfectly and works well in the synergy with the monk's items I talked about earlier. The Protective Sparks Wall. This is a very cool item that only works in synergy with charged spark items. This leather armor pairs perfectly with the spark glows, giving plus 1 to saving throws against spells. Additionally, having charged sparks provides plus 1 to armor class and saving throws. If you equip this armor on a monk with a high dexterity, the protection ring and the spark gloves, you'll have a formidable character. The only drawback is that the appearance of this leather armor may not suit a monk, but at least you can dye it. Silver Sword of the Astral Plane. This yellow item is overpowered and only drops with a 9% chance from the Dragon Rider. Broken items are not immersive, so I won't recommend them. Fallery Loof. The Sword of the Thousand Truths can be found on a rock in the dungeon. It's an interesting weapon that buffs your group with plus 1d4 to attacks and checks to charisma and wisdom. Alternatively, you can switch its debuff mode for enemies, decreasing their overall accuracy and dealing potential additional lightning damage of 1d4 in case of a lightning attack. It seems to work well for a lightning priest subclass. Noble Stalk, a very interesting mushroom that awakens certain memories in Shadow Heart and provides unique dialects or restores your Dark Urge character's memories. Try giving the mushroom to Shadow Heart or consume it yourself. Avoid triggering the mushroom's explosion by jumping on the platform edges and removing the catalyst torch. Gloves of Uninhibited Kushigo. These are fun gloves that gives plus 1d4 damage to thrown items. You'll obtain these gloves from a smelly gnome. After saving the Artistic Dwarf, there's also a throwing ring that stacks on top of these gloves for added damage, if you plan to throw your dwarves. The Baneful. This is an interesting blade that fully reveals itself only in the hands of a Warlock or Eldritch Knight. It debuffs enemies for 1d4 and has plus 1 bonus to hit. In its back state, it becomes even better with plus 1 bonus to enchantment. Adamantine Split Armor. This is a powerful set of armor that remains useful even in the third act. Unfortunately, the amount of mithril ore required for crafting is limited to two units. It's recommended to craft medium and heavy armor pieces, as the other items have some issues. Keep in mind that the forge can be buggy, so save the game before approaching it. The Graceful Cloth, a cool item for monks that increases dexterity by 2 points, boosting damage from fist attacks and your character's armor rating. It also improves the chance to dodge attacks and reduces fall damage by 50%. You can obtain this armor from Lady Esther in the Mountain Range Temple of Lethander. It pairs well with the Sparkle Hands, granting an advantage against armored enemies. 
pair up of wound closure. This is a great amulet with two critical properties. The first property automatically stabilizes the character if their HP drops to zero, essentially healing and getting them back on their feet. The second property, the second property increases the maximum amount of health restored by spells. This item is most effective in the middle of the second or beginning of the third act, as clerics or priests have enough spell slots of third level to benefit from it. You can purchase this amulet from Paladin Lady Esther in the Lathander Temple location. Hell Rider's Pride. These overpowered gloves can be obtained by completing Zevlor's quests. These gloves provide a resistance buff against all types of physical damage. When combined with the plus 1 d4 blessing from the previously mentioned ring, they become a significant buff for your mass healing. Knife of the Under Mountain King and Spear of the Unseen Menace. You can purchase these two cool items from the NPC named Ajaknir Jira below the Lathander Temple. The knife is actually a short sword, as indicated in its item description. It has a chance to critically hit when rolling less than 17, selecting the highest result. It also rolls two dice against enemies in shadow or semi-shadow, and it has a plus two bonus to its base stats. The Spear of the Unseen Menace is a fun weapon that is considered a halberd for some reason. This means you can take the polearm and sentinel feats with all their benefits, in addition to its long attack range. Soulbreaker Great Sword. You can obtain this item from the Inquisitor in the Lathander Temple. Apart from providing plus 1d4 to psionic attacks for tieflings, it also increases the initiative of the character wielding it by 2 points. This is great for party members, who are fighters without much dexterity, improving their initiative at the start of battle. Additionally, this sword has a strong stun move that works exceptionally well against most bosses, making them vulnerable for one turn if you manage to hit. Jorgoral's Great Sword. In terms of base stats, it is very similar to the Soulbreaker, but it has a unique moveset. It can hit targets 5 to 6 meters in front of you in area effect, which means that if you choose a favorable position at the start of the battle or pull enemies in front of you, you can deal 15 to 30 damage to all targets in front of you, potentially causing hundreds of points of damage. Thank you for joining me on this epic journey through the world of Baldur's Gate 3. I hope you found my exploration of these incredible items and secrets both informative and exciting. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay updated on more gaming content. Until next time, happy gaming and stay safe!